what if a long list of questions, starting with those two words, have consumed Black Cat fans since the team's quest to lift the Cricket World Cup trophy came up agonisingly short against England in London this morning. The hosts were crowned champions after the final at the famous Lord's Ground concluded in tense and dramatic fashion. That is an understatement. The teams scored the same total from their full 50 overs and from what were expected to be match-deciding super overs where each team has six extra balls to score as many runs as possible. In the end, England claimed the trophy because they hit more boundaries than New Zealand. As Clay Wilson reports, it was one of many talking points from what's being described as one of cricket's greatest ever matches. Guttall's going to push for two. They've got to go. It's got to throw. It's got to go to the keeper's end. He's got it. England have won the World Cup by the barest of margins. A dramatic moment to end a World Cup final which came to a close with several of them. Black Caps batsman Martin Guptill run out, coming back for a second run which would have given his team the title. Instead it was England, not New Zealand, claiming their first World Cup crown, based on a countback of total boundaries after the two teams both scored 241 from their 50 overs and 15 each in the super overs that followed. Some former international players and prominent names in cricket have heavily criticised using boundaries as the deciding factor. Black Caps captain Kane Williamson conceded it wasn't easy coming to terms with. While the emotions are raw, it is pretty hard to swallow when two attempts to separate with a winner and a loser still didn't perhaps sort of shine with one side coming through it, it just is what it is really the rules are there at the start no one probably thought that would have to result to some of that stuff but yeah very tough to swallow after coming out on the right side of the count back at the home of cricket england captain owen morgan said the match had to be decided somehow if you could give me an alternative i'd, I'd be able to compare the both but i can't think of an alternative at the moment the rules are obviously set out a long time ago and we have no control over them there was also no control for New Zealand when it came to a moment which helped England snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. After battling their way to what appeared a modest 241 against a power-packed English batting lineup, New Zealand's accurate bowling and fight in the field again came to the fore. And after breaking a 110-run partnership between Ben Stokes and Joss Butler, the Black Caps were on track for the upset, with the home side needing nine from three balls with just two wickets in hand. But when Stokes dove to make his ground and his outstretched bat inadvertently deflected the ball to the boundary for four bonus runs, England were able to force the final to a super over scenario and ultimately prevail. Williamson though wasn't dwelling on that moment alone. You can't look at that and think that perhaps that decided the match. There were so many other bits and pieces to that game that were so important. Um, when it comes down to a tie, you start looking at every single delivery, don't you? But it was a pretty tough pill to swallow when we were looking uh, pretty likely with Trent bowling really, really well. So one of those things. Just one ball later, Stokes found fortune again. As Trent Bolt took a catch inches from the boundary, only to step on the rope a split second before being able to throw the ball to Guptill. When the Super Overs ensued, the equation of 16 to win proved just out of the Black Caps' reach. Coach Gary Stead felt, in the end, that maybe it just wasn't meant to be for his team. I guess the hard thing is we, we played two games today, we had a super over as well, we didn't lose either of them, we bowled them out as well and you still don't win the game and, and unfortunately that's sport but maybe it was just England needed it more than us today. Although ecstatic, Morgan admitted they got the rub of the green when it mattered. The England captain said he did feel some empathy for New Zealand. The most admirable thing is the way that they play their cricket. They consistently perform and compete against the very best. And they do it in a fashion that you'd have no qualms in turning around to your kid and saying, please idolise the, these guys, they are admirable. That kind of sentiment couldn't dull the impact of a devastating outcome for Williamson and his team. But after coming within a few feet of glory, after qualifying for the semi-finals in the fourth and final spot, it didn't mean the Black Caps captain wasn't able to put their campaign in context. 
And the thing you walk away with is the amount of heart and the amount of fight that the guys have shown throughout this whole campaign, but none more than the match that we've just witnessed. And both sides showed that today, and it did come down to, I don't know how they won it. What was it? Boundaries or something? But, um, <laughs> you know, it was someone had to walk away with the title, and we're gutted that it's not us. A place in cricketing folklore, albeit on the wrong side. Motihotaka Otiahipo Nei, Ko Clay Wilson Aho.